All right. I think this is about started. So hello and welcome, whether you're watching this live or whether you are watching this later. I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. So today I want to talk to you about something that is very, very important and that is prepositions. Little words that can create a big problem. And trust me, you know, come here. This is important because many people have these mistakes and we can correct them. So let's start, boom. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you about these tricky prepositions, specifically, the prepositions and the verbs that they follow. And when it comes to prepositions, you know, there is a lot. Um, oh, again, if you're just joining us, please uh, say hello in the comments. Tell us your name. Where are you joining from? We'd love to hear from you. We have one message. Uh, Keika, sorry if I'm mispronouncing names. Hey, how's it going? Um, hope you're having a great Saturday. So today we're going to talk about these prepositions and the verbs that they follow. We're going to do these four prepositions right here about, with, for, and to. Because when it comes to prepositions, this is a big topic. You have prepositions of time, prepositions of place, prepositions of movement. Today I want to just focus on certain verbs and the prepositions that they go with. Because again, these are mistakes that learners make. It doesn't matter whether you are a beginner or whether you are an advanced learner. People have uh, trouble with prepositions and that's perfectly normal because they can be difficult to learn and they go pretty easily unnoticed. So today we're going to talk about these prepositions and then at the end we are going to practice what we've learned. So again, stick with us, get ready to do some interactive practice. Um, again, hello, a job from Afghanistan, um, living in Sweden, great to have you, thanks for joining us. Um, again, if you've entered, let us know, say hello, what's, um, you know, where you're from, love to hear from you guys. So let's first start with answering the question as to why are prepositions so hard to get right? Okay, so the first thing you need to understand that there are two types of words. Prepositions are function words. So we have function words and content words. Now your content words are going to be your nouns, your verbs, your adjectives, like things that we can visualize in our mind and they really give meaning to the sentence. Function words, which are prepositions, are those little words that connect them. They don't give much meaning to the sentence, but they sometimes might tell us the relationship between um, different words. So even though they don't give much meaning, they're very important because they connect them, which means they are necessary for grammar. Again, if you're just joining us, we're gonna talk about prepositions. So again, say hello, say something in the chat, tell us your name, where you're from, and if you really wanna be a super student, then you can share this video and help us spread the word to more so that nobody is having any trouble with prepositions. So as I was saying, Prepositions are function words, and because of that, they are not stressed, they're not emphasized when you're speaking, and that really means, again, like I said, they go unnoticed, which means people tend to make some very simple and easy mistakes with them. And it's one of those things, it's a mistake that most of the time people are still, they're going to be able to understand what you're trying to say, the message that you are trying to get across. But if you're speaking with a native speaker, people will pick up on this. And of course, if you're an English learner out there trying to improve your English, all of us would like to improve and correct our mistakes. So I want to talk to you about four prepositions and the verb they follow. Those four prepositions at the bottom there, about, with, for, and to. And as we go along, I'm going to be asking you guys to write sentences, 
uh, to practice using these prepositions. And then at the end, we'll do a bit of a practice. So first, let's look at about, okay? So I've given you the preposition about and the verbs that it follows, okay? Yeah, I'm from Iraq. I really want to talk like a native speaker. Awesome. If you want to talk like a native speaker, that's great. This is going to help you because prepositions, like I said, there's those little tricky words that become very difficult and confusing and easy to make mistakes. So again, these are verbs that are followed by about, okay? You can be anxious about something, okay? Uh, you can argue about something. I wrote that sentence down below. They argued about the bad service. Maybe you go to a restaurant, you get bad service, and you argue about it. You can also care about something. You can be, uh, also again in that sentence, we care about each other. All of us care about different things. And you can also be excited about something. This is a very common verb that people use. Excited. What are you excited about? In the comments right now, if you're in this, uh, if you're watching us, write a sentence. Practice using the preposition with the verb. What are you excited about? Okay, I'm going to write that question in there. What are you excited about? And I want you to use the verb and the preposition. This is how we improve our language skills so that you start using it correctly, okay? Tell me what you're excited about. Wes is excited about the road trip, all right? I love to travel, I love taking road trips. I'm excited about it. You can also be upset about something, you know? Maybe you're upset about, um, not being able to attend this live lesson. I have no idea. Or you can be serious about something. Um, you can also be sorry about something or you can worry about it. We said parents worry about their children. Um, awesome example sentence. So I just wrote, I'm excited about my trip to Ukraine. Perfect. Excellent use of the, pre of the verb and the preposition. That is perfect. So again, these are verbs followed by about. Now, th these are not all the verbs. Again, I'm just taking bits and pieces because again, this is a very difficult and large topic, but these are good to keep familiarizing ourselves with the verbs and the prepositions that follow them. So these are some verbs that are followed by about. Again, in the comments, tell me what you are excited about and keep practicing and practicing and practicing because practice makes perfect. Okay, let's continue. Again, if you're just joining us today, let us know your name, where you're joining us from, practice, write some stuff in the chat, use these prepositions because it's going to help you learn. All right, let's look at the next one is with. Okay, so here are some verbs that are followed by with. All right. First, we have agree. You can agree with someone. Um, I don't agree with you. I tried to write some sentences that are kind of common that you might hear in TV, movies, or that you would use in conversation. If you say, yeah, I just don't agree with you. You agree with someone or you don't agree with them. Angry, okay? I've put a little asterisk next to angry and bored, and this is where prepositions get tricky and confusing and frustrated. Um, be frustrating because you can use more than one preposition with some verbs. So you can be angry with someone. You can also be angry at someone. So this is something um, that's a little difficult. Typically, I would say you're more angry at a situation. You can also be angry about a situation. But for right now, just focus on with. You're angry with someone, all right? So we have some more sentence. I'm excited about writing every word you are saying. Mm, excellent, perfect. Um, 
Hello, Raymond. Hi. Hello from Brazil. Excellent. We're getting people from all over the world. This is great. So angry, you know, you're angry with someone. You're also bored with something. Okay. What are you bored with? All right. I want you, um, well, not yet. We'll do it in just a second. You can be bored with something. I put an asterisk there because you can also be bored of something. So with or of those are two different prepositions that you can use. Now, you're probably sitting there wondering like, well, okay, how do we figure this out? How do we keep doing this? Are there any rules? I, I don't like to say try to learn a rule to, to figure out these little grammar nuances. The best way to do it is to practice like we're doing now, where you're actually learning directly about it, or even just reading. When you're reading, you see how it's used in context and you start to internalize that information. Next, we have busy. You are busy with something. They are so busy with their work and family, maybe they don't have time to do anything. Um, so again, in the comments, let's practice this. Tell me what you are busy with these days. What are you busy with? Are you busy with work? Are you busy with travel? Are you busy with your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend? Are you busy with children? Tell me what you are busy with these days. Again, recommend write the comments, read each other's comments because this is going to keep, this is going to help you learn. This is how you get better. Um, you wrote, Sonia, I'm bored of doing boring things. Perfect sentence. That is perfect structure, perfect use of the preposition. You're bored of doing something. Um, you can also say I'm bored with doing boring things. Same meaning. This is why they're tricky. Um, I'm excited about my weekend here in Brazil. Somebody wrote, excellent, all right. Uh, I'm excited about my weekend too, and I'm excited about teaching you guys about prepositions. Um, let's continue with our list. So fed up, if you are fed up, it means that you are, you are tired of something. You're frustrated, you can't deal with it anymore. You are fed up with something or fed up with someone. So I wrote in the sentence, you might hear something like, I'm fed up with this crap, all right? You're just tired of it. You could also take crap and write another word in there, some profanity, starts with an S, ends with a T, is also something common that you might hear, especially in movies and music. Um, but again, that's what it means. You are fed up with something, all right? What are you... Um, Somebody, oh, uh, I'm busy running long distance with running long distances. Okay, great. Um, I'm also running long distances because Joanna and I are training for a marathon later this fall, though, so we still have time. I'm busy with my cat. Perfect. All right, excellent. Again, if you're joining us, practice using these. Write it in the comments, in the chat. What are you busy with? That was my question for you. Let's continue with our list, presented, um, you can be presented with something. So in this case, if you are presented with something, then you are getting something. Somebody is giving something to you, all right? You are presented with a present. The next two, pleased and satisfied, they're pretty much synonyms. You are pleased with something or someone or you're satisfied with something. Um, the boss was satisfied with my work. Okay, so again, these are verbs followed by the preposition with, all right? There are more out there, but we're just looking at these for right now. Let's continue and talk about four, okay? Here we go. So, these are verbs followed by four, okay? And the first one, you apologize for something. All right, so <laughs> I'm fed up with prepositions. Yes, I completely understand that. Um, I think many learners out there are fed up with prepositions as well as some other grammar nuances. Um, so you apologize for something. You apologize for doing something. Um, he apologized for his mistake. Again, I put an asterisk there because you can use other prepositions with this. You apologize to someone. So again, think of the difference. You apologize to someone, but you apologize for something. You know, whatever the mistake was, that is what you are apologizing for. You also can apply for something. In this case, it's pretty much talking about a job. The job um, that you're looking for, you are looking for a job, you are applying for a job. 
Again, you can also use to if you're talking about something a little more specific. Maybe you're applying to university. I'm applying to this university. I'm applying to that university. But if you're applying for something, you're talking about maybe a position that you hope to get, that you hope to obtain. You also can be blamed for something as well as famous for something. Me, I'm famous for interactive English. Not really famous because there will only be hundreds of people that might watch this lesson, but hey, that's great. I hope all of you learn a little something about these tri tricky prepositions. So uh, another example sentence, great. I apologized um, for my, I apologize. You would wanna say, I apologize to my boss for coming late um, at, at my job, all right? I apologize to my boss, or I apologized for coming in late. Excellent. You can also prepare for something, all right? You want to prepare. I was trying to prepare for this lesson this morning. That's what I was doing. Also, you ready. You can be ready for something. This is a common question you're going to hear. Are you ready for this? Okay. Are you ready for this? Um, as well as responsible, you know, you are responsible for something, for doing something. Uh, in that picture, somebody spilled some wine that is not good. And you might ask, who is responsible for this? Okay. And then the last one, stand. You stand for something, things, something you believe in, something you are passionate about. All right. What do you stand for? All right. These are common verbs that are followed by the preposition for. All right, let's take a look at the last one and then we will do the practice, okay? Again, if you're joining us, practice using these, write some sentences in the, the chat. I will comment on them. Uh, so let's look at the last one, two, all right? So here we have, all right, um, have another example set. I'm preparing my mind for a camping activity. Okay. I'm preparing maybe a little better. Say I'm preparing myself for something. I'm preparing myself for a camping activity. I'm preparing myself for a trip. Um, two verbs that are followed by two. All right. Remember you can apologize for something but you also apologize to someone. Wes apologized to Ioana for his mistake. Now, this is probably something I probably don't apologize enough, <laughs> and Ioana might agree with that, but I apologize to Ioana for my mistake, whatever that is, um, or whatever that may be, you apologize to someone. Again, I said you also apply to something. Maybe you apply to a university. Um, you apply for a job, you apply to a university. Okay. Accustomed. You are accustomed to something. You're accustomed to doing something. We we're accustomed to cold weather. We're comfortable with it. We are used to it. You are accustomed to something addicted. This is something you, you hear all the time. My question for you again is I'm going to write it in the chat. What are you addicted to? All right. What are you addicted to? Yes. You can be addicted to doing something or you can just be addicted to something. All right. People are addicted to YouTube. I'm addicted to YouTube. I don't know if you are addicted to YouTube. We're on YouTube right now. Um, but people can be addicted to things. If you're just joining us, we're talking about prepositions and the verbs they follow. Try using these in the sentence. That is what I, I would encourage you to do. Write it in the chat. Produce the language. That is how we all learn. Um, now, shortly, we're just going to do a practice. All right. So tell me again, what are you addicted to? The other four verbs is attached, you know, attached to something. We have uh, that example sentence. The note is attached to the message board. All right. That example sentence right down there. All right. And it says, follow us on Facebook again, check it out. Uh, it's another great way to practice English. Look us up interactive English. Another, okay. Another great example sentence. I'm addicted to cycling and running. Awesome. All right. Something that you really, really love doing. You are addicted to it. 
Refer. Again, you refer to something, all right? They're asking you to look at it, to consult it, to check something out. You refer to it. Please refer to this. Please refer to that, okay? You can also respond to someone, all right? You are responding to um, a comment, all right? We always try to respond to your comments. So again, even if you're not live and you're watching this later, write questions, write sentences in the comments, write us questions in the comments, and we will respond to you, okay? And last, you can have something that can be similar to something else. Okay, so these are verbs that are followed by the prep, uh, preposition to. Again, there are more verbs out there, but we just want to stick with a few. We don't want to make it too overwhelming. Okay, I'm addicted to, I'm addicted to using social media. Okay, excellent. Um, please share our videos on social media. That would be awesome. Um, so you're addicted to using uh, social media. That's perfect. Um, again, sh we had a question, um, should we use a noun after addicted to? You can, it's, it's up to you. You can be addicted to um, coffee, for example, or you can use the gerund after it. I'm addicted to drinking coffee. I'm addicted to, you said, I'm addicted to cycling, okay? You're using the gerund in that case. So you can use just a noun or the gerund. Again, a gerund technically is a noun. So either one, you can be addicted to something or you can be addicted to doing something, either one. All right, are you ready? So hopefully you, hopefully you guys remember this. All right, I'm gonna give you some sentences now and we are going to practice what we've learned, okay? So here I have given you a sentence with a blank and I want you to use one of those prepositions about, with, for, or to, to complete the sentence, okay? Again, even when you have these situations with prepositions because they're function words, um, and you're not sure which one to use, I, I would again say, just do, do go with what feels right. Just try it, and then again, the more you practice, the more you will internalize this information, and you will start using it correctly. So this is good practice right now. Please refer the safety manual for more information, okay? So which one, which preposition should you use in this sentence, all right? You refer mm, something, okay? This is a sentence that you will probably hear um, on uh, if you're flying, if you're traveling on a plane, uh, they go over a safety manual and they'll ask you to refer mm, the safety manual. So in the chat, in the comments, write which preposition you would use with this question, all right? Please refer mm, the safety manual for more information. And if you're not sure, um, oh, I just shared your video with my friend. Awesome, thank you. Um, if you're not sure which preposition to use, just write, I don't know, okay? It's perfectly fine. This is how we practice, practice, practice. Again, if you're just joining us, we're doing a preposition practice. So I'm giving you a little mini quiz right now, um, and I want you to write your answer in the chat. Okay, if you're watching this video later, years from now, write the sentence in the comments, okay? Again, it helps to produce the language. Make it interactive, make it more active learning, not passive learning. So we have some answers in there, excellent, all right? So please refer, if you're talking about the verb refer, it is followed by to, okay? Please refer to the safety manual for more information. Okay, so the next one, I just have six of these, okay? So it'll go quickly. The next question I have for you, boom, right here. The team is upset losing the match, okay? The team is upset losing the match. What are you going to use? What preposition follows 
the verb upset? Are we going to use about, with, for, or to? Okay. Again, this is stuff that, uh, you know, you, these are common sentences that you might hear. And, and we use that verb upset all the time. All right. But what preposition follows that verb? Write your answer in the chat. Okay. Are you going to use about, with, for, to? The team is upset, mm, losing the match. Okay. So we got some answers. Remember, if you're talking about upset, I the, the complete one is the best answer, about, okay? You are upset about or losing the match. We had somebody answer, it said upset with, okay? Let me make a quick distinction now. So you are, again, you can use with after upset. You're usually upset about something or you would be upset with someone. So if you're talking about a person like, yeah, I'm upset with her, I'm upset with him, I'm upset with my children, I'm upset with my parents, you would talk about people, all right, if you're using with, upset with someone. But if you're talking about something, a situation, all right, you're gonna use about. I'm upset about losing the match, all right? So that is a quick distinction. Let's do another one. Ready? Here is the question. I want you to write in the preposition, okay? We stand mm, justice and equality, all right? Which preposition follows the verb stand, okay? Write it in the chat. We stand mm, justice and equality, okay? Remember, uh, I said like a common question people might ask, um, they would say, what do you stand? Mm. All right, they're asking you about your beliefs. What do you think, okay? You stand mm, justice and equality, okay? Which one do you think? Are we gonna use about, with, for, or to? Okay, so again, if, if you're not sure, just write it in there. Take a guess. Again, it doesn't matter if it's wrong or right. This is all to practice, okay? And I'm going to make some comments because these are tricky, especially because depending on the context, you can use more than one preposition, all right? So if we are talking about stand, remember I said you stand for something, okay? What do you believe in, okay? I stand for justice and equality. That's what I believe in. That's what I want. That's what I'm passionate about. Um, we, we had one person answer, stand with. Again, you can use that. I would say you stand with someone, all right? If you're saying like, okay, I'm on your side. I stand with her. I stand with him, all right? In that case, you can also, similar meaning, you stand by someone. Okay, you, you are with them, you believe in them, you support them, you stand by someone, you stand with someone, okay? But if you're talking about their beliefs, kind of, like, um, and it's mostly talking about you in this context when you say, stand for, what do you stand for? I stand for this, I stand for that, okay? Let's do another one, okay, this is a good one. How about this question? What are we gonna put in there? Which preposition? Boom. Okay, I'm fed up mm, these tricky prepositions. Okay, when we're talking about fed up, what are we going to use? Are we going to use about, with, for, or to? I'm fed up mm, these tri tricky prepositions. Remember, I said fed up, it means you're kind of, you're, you're tired of this, you, you don't want to deal with it anymore, you are just fed up mm, something, okay? Which preposition are we going to use, okay? If you are fed up, if you are fed up, we would want to use with. Remember, you are fed up with these tricky prepositions. It's pretty much also a three word phrasal verb because you're fed up with something, okay? You are tired of it. Um, you are fed up with, all right? 
So, excellent. Let's keep going. All right. I have, all right, two more questions. Two more. Let's do two more. Um, here we go. So, try this one. All right. This is a, a common sentence that you would hear TV, movies, in conversation if you're talking about um, the verb worry. All right. I'm really worried. Mm, you. All right. I'm really worried. Mm, you. You know, what? what's the most, uh, technically you might be able to use more than one, but what is the most appropriate one that, that people would use? You know, I'm really worried, mm, you. Okay, which one uh, are we going to use? Everybody's answering, excellent, excellent, excellent. Correct, you worry about someone. I really worry about you. Okay, what are you worried about? I'm worried about this situation. I'm worried about that situation. I'm worried about this person, that person. Um, you worry about someone or something. Next one, let's look at this. Okay, here we go. And bam, I need to prepare my job interview. Which preposition is going to follow prepare? I need to prepare my job interview. Again, if you're watching this later on, write the answers in the comments, produce the language, it's going to help you. If you have any questions, write them in the comments as well. We will answer, we will respond to you. So which verb, which preposition are we going to use with prepare? I need to prepare my job interview. Um, Estella, hi, how's it going? Welcome. Um, Again, we're doing some prepositions. I want you to write your answer in the chat, okay? What are we going to use with prepare? All right, we got some answers in there. Excellent. So, I need to prepare for my job interview, okay? Remember, you prepare for something, all right? So again, we talked about these prepositions and the verbs that they follow. This is a great way to practice. Reading is another great way to practice. If you're watching TVs or movies, using subtitles is a great way to practice because again, a lot of times, um, especially if you're just listening, that's why reading is so important because you're seeing the preposition. When you're just listening, a lot of times it's difficult to pick up on those prepositions because we're emphasizing the content words, not those function words, and they're easily, um, they go unnoticed for the most part. So I want to thank all of you guys for joining us. Um, I really appreciate it. If you are watching this now or watching it later, if you're watching this now, please give it a like. If you're watching it later, please give it a like. And if you have any questions, just write them in the comments and we will respond to you. Um, and always practice. You can practice these questions and again, write the sentences in the comments. If you just joined us now, sorry, um, the, 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 the lesson is wrapping up. We will keep, we're gonna try and do live lessons every Saturday. We haven't been very consistent with our times just yet. We're trying to work on that because we have a lot of different things going on right now. But I hope you guys are able, we're able to follow this lesson. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions, just write them in the comments. Uh, one question somebody asked, can we say, I need to get prepared for my job interview? Um, you can say, I need to get, pre I need to get prepared. Um, but again, I, I think it's just unnecessary to say, I need to prepare for my job interview. Um, it it kind of means the same thing. Uh, you wouldn't say get prepared, it'd be get prepared for my job interview. Um, you are very welcome. I know so you thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. This has been great. Again, um, if you really wanna help share this video, share our other videos, we're trying to spread the word and build a larger classroom and we will keep doing these lessons, live lessons and releasing videos, which we are doing every Tuesday right now. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and we will see you next time, all right? So long.